thank everybody for being here today. There's been a lot of changes happening in our communities and our businesses, so it's really important for us to keep in touch and stay abreast of everything that's happening. I'm Danielle McFadden. I'm the president of the Greater Lowell Chamber of Commerce. Um, so we got a lot of questions via email, and some of them seemed like they were more uh, apt for the SBA and lenders to answer. So what I'm going to do is we'll get through as many questions as we can today, um, but we have some great resources that I will send out to you. So if you did not register in advance through our constant contact link, if you can just either email me, I'll put my email in the chat right now, or put your email in the chat, and we'll make sure that we get the answers to your questions. Are there any resources that we think would be of benefit to you? And we also want to let everybody know that any business or organization in the community has access to anything that the chamber is doing right now. So we're not limiting our events, our resources to our members. We really want to help everybody in the community right now. Um, so I'm always available. If you have any questions or if you want to check our website, attend any of our events, we highly encourage you to do that. So without further ado, I'm gonna hand it over to City Councilor Sakari Chow. He's the one that got the ball rolling on this. Um, we're, we're thrilled to, to be partnering with, this, with him on this initiative. Sakari? Uh, thank you, Danielle. Thanks so much for uh, having me on. Um, this is such an impressive group uh, that you put together here, Danielle, and thank you so much for having me co-host this panel with you. Uh, we will learn a lot. Uh, we have all the delegation here present. Um, before I introduce them, um, I just want to let you know that uh, speaking with small business owners, it really touches my heart because I, I ran a, uh, in my 20 professional years, I ran a small business uh, myself in downtown Lowell. I ran a mortgage company, Merrimack Mortgage, right on the corner of Central and Merrimack Street. And in my 20 uh, something years of uh, professional career, I have gone through, or I'm going through one of them uh, right now with all of you, but I have uh, seen two major financial crises. Uh, one was the, uh, the dot-com bubble, which I posted. Um, that was a sector crisis, so even though a lot of people in the, uh, in the internet and the technology were suffering that time because of the Silicon Valley, we all feel like we could run our lives, especially businesses and other sectors. And the second one which uh, wiped uh, me out in 2008 was the real estate uh, uh, crisis. My wife and I ran the mortgage company together and um, uh, it was a terrible time. I felt like it's the end of the world. Um, you can't turn on the TV without hearing um, any bad news from all over the, the country, if, if not the world. Um, a lot of unemployment, a lot of houses foreclosed, um, people get laid off left and right. But again, at that time, uh, there was some sector of the economy that were doing well, and it was just the opposite. The, the high tech world was booming at that time, and uh, manufacturing was still doing, um, uh, surviving, they were moving abroad and so forth. And of course, this is the third uh, crisis, and I believe this is total. Um, it's both, uh, well, maybe three, it's an economic crisis, a health crisis, and a social crisis, because uh, we can't even uh, meet each other in person. It takes a toll on our wallets, our savings, and our, our psyche, and we worry all the time about our health. And this is the, probably the, the first time uh, in, in my life that I really feel that every single one of us is going through this together. Uh, there's an old saying um, from the uh, depression, which I read, uh, the definition of recession and depression. Um, they were saying, like, if your neighbor is unemployed, that's recession. If you are unemployed, that's depression. <laughs> so um, I always remember that, and we're all sort of going through uh, uh, through the same thing. So I'm, I'm very excited to hear some good answers from the, the state delegation today. And I know all, all of you, all the business owners who are joining us and who are listening, uh, we have such high anxiety about, about today, about uh, tomorrow, about, about everything. Uh, before I introduce the three uh, uh, delegates, I want to um, welcome my co-counselor, Vice Mayor Rita Mercier. Um, as well. Hi, hi, Rita. Thank you, Sakari. I appreciate it. Great job. Uh, thank you so much. I don't know if you want to say something quickly before I introduce uh, uh, the senator. Well, can you imagine someone putting their blood, sweat, and tears and all the money that they have to open up a business and something like this takes place? How devastating is that? I, I feel so bad for the businesses that uh, it's not an easy time for them as well. So 
my heart goes out to them. I do whatever I can to order food. And God knows I'm keeping a track of it because I gained like 20 pounds. So thank you very much, restauranteurs. I'm doing my part and I'm surely showing it. So thank you very much for having this. This is interesting. Uh, uh, it's great. Uh, one of the, uh, the first state delegate, uh, one of the local delegates I would like to introduce is Senator Ed Kennedy. I don't know if uh, Sen uh, Senator Kennedy's on. Um, uh, Senator Kennedy, um, because of my uh, small business deal in the past, I work, um, I have some deal with all the delegates in uh, some form but another in, in, in business. And Senator Ed Kennedy has been a friend of mine for about 20 years. Um, if he's on, um, I can have him uh, speak first. Senator, are you there? Okay, well, we'll come back to the Senator. Maybe he's not signed on yet. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's, he should be arriving soon. And I just saw that Tom Golden just came in too. So Representative okay. here right. as well. I, I know um, uh, Rep Golden is, is busy um, uh, getting out of the meetings well. So if, um, I don't know if um, uh, Representative Dave Nangle is on the phone and Dave Nangle is a great guy. Um, he's always involved in the community, have uh, many, many small businesses and nonprofits in the city. He's always delivering good things uh, to the city. Representative Nankel, if you're on, uh, would you mind saying something? Thank you, Sakari, and uh, thank you very much for putting this together with Danielle. Uh, you did it. I think this is a great idea. Uh, Councilor Mercier, I know, is on here as well, and thank you to Councilor Mercier also. Um, I've uh, probably been on more conference calls in the last three weeks than I have in my entire life. Um, and I think it's a great way of sharing information. It's a great way of answering some questions on the House side, um, Tommy and Roddy and myself, you know, there's different groups in the House that you, you get on to conference calls and the speaker is on there with a dozen or 15 members and then, and so forth. So it's really a great opportunity to hear what they're doing on the state end, what uh, questions we may have of them whenever these calls happen several times a week. We've been on all sorts of conference calls with Congresswoman Laurie Trahan. Uh, also, as far as Lowell General Circle Health, Jody White has been terrific up there. Um, obviously, all of us here in the greater Lowell community are very familiar with Lowell General and under the uh, conditions and you know, I mean, clearly we're in the middle of uh, an unprecedented, unprecedented crisis. I mean, there's no other way to call it. But that hospital is really rising to the occasion as best they can. And, and uh, you know, we, you know, Jody gives us an update weekly, tells us what's going on. The biggest thing for them is ventilators up there. Obviously, uh, I know all of you on this call today have heard all the, the cries for those, not just here in Lowell or in this state, all across the country. But um, just to go back to some of the some of the important issues, um, uh, Councilor Mercier, I heard you just saying talking about supporting the local businesses during this time with the takeout. I I also have been doing that and try to mix it up a little bit here in Lowell and out into Thamesford and just try to um, pick up some food. And one thing that my office has been doing, we did this now. I think we're in the third week now. I put a spot on the radio and something in the newspaper, particularly for the elderly in this time. Some of those individuals that live alone um, don't have any means to get out to the stores as it is. So we've been doing a lot of those sort of constituent service types. Um, I've even just been picking up food at different places and just go to different homes of people that I know are alone and drop them some food and so it's my way of supporting the local businesses, uh, which is very important at this time. I think that my colleagues will agree. I know that Tom and Roddy and Ned, I believe, are on here. That the number one, the number one uh, phone uh, issue, the number one issue that uh, I know my office has been getting, and I'm sure they'll speak to it as well, is the unemployment uh, issues, questions, not just from uh, individuals being laid off, but. Um, also small businesses, sole proprietors and so forth, gig workers and independent contractors and whatnot. But that's been the, um, the biggest question, that the biggest issue that my office has been dealing with here now for uh, whatever it is, the last three plus weeks. And my understanding is on the unemployment, they are fielding about 6,000 inquiries per day. I mean, and um, 
you know, I just know firsthand that a lot of people are getting frustrated and I don't blame them. But again, these are unprecedented times and the numbers are just staggering. I mean, um, I think it was back in um, February. I was just, I had something written down. I had a note that I had written down that I had read and I saw it somewhere. But back in February, I want to say the numbers uh, for Massachusetts for unemployment were somewhere around 100 to 120,000 um, individuals. Now we're pushing 500,000. Here we are, you know, three weeks, four weeks later. So um, I know that people are getting frustrated when they're trying to do their inquiries into the unemployment system. And I understand that they're desperate. And um, so at that point, a lot of them and anybody can reach out to my office and we've been able to kind of navigate through some of the red tape to help them out. We're all as legislators, just, you know, we're all doing our job to do what we can to assist any of our constituents or anybody for that matter. Uh, we're not just having to help people in our own districts. I wouldn't do that. If I get a call from elsewhere, I'll try to help them out or put them in touch with the uh, according rep or senator at that time. But, but you know, you know the, one of the big things is, I don't want to... Can I get a little background? Alright, so I'm going to mute everybody and representative Baker. Yep. You can just unmute yourself. Yeah. Um, yeah. All right. I'm okay. So I muted everybody. So I'm just going to need Representative Nangle to unmute himself. He can do that. Okay. I'm back, Danielle. Okay. Is that okay, Danielle? Perfect. Thank you. Okay. So, you know, some of the other questions that we've been receiving is about rents and mortgages. Um, you know, a lot of people are without their paychecks right now or not as much as they were making through the unemployment. I would encourage anybody that has questions about, about those issues to reach out if you have a mortgage. Um, reach out to your financial institution. And a lot of them are giving, you know, 90-day grace periods with no penalty, nothing issued to your credit or anything like that. It would just be tacked on to the end of your the end of your mortgage. So I would, you know, if that's a question that I think was mentioned earlier uh, yesterday, I heard someone talking about that on another conference call. Reach out to your individual financial institution and just explain to them that you, you know, you got laid off or you lost your position or whatever the case may be. And from what I'm hearing, the majority of the lending institutions are being sympathetic to it, and they'll give you a 90-day uh, grace period. So I think that's one issue. And the last thing that I would just talk about for a minute is, is the hospitals. I talked about Old General a little earlier. They've, uh, they've really been unbelievable. And, uh, you know, the biggest thing that we're trying with them is the ventilators. Senator Kennedy was spearheading something with Congresswoman Trahan um, that I'm sure he'll talk about that we all signed on to a letter for ventilators from Phillips, a, a local company. Um, but we're doing everything for the personal protection equipment as well. And um, I have two family members that are nurses and I hear the stories of what they're dealing with day in and day out on the front lines in these hospitals and we need to do everything we can. And I think um, the administration has done a terrific job with that. We're all aware of the masks, the N95s that came in from China, although unfortunately it sounds like some of them are knockoffs and they're working that out. But um, we're doing everything we can as a, as, a, as a legislature and I know the administration is is doing everything they can. I think Governor Baker has done a great job. Um, and then the last thing is, I'm sure you're all aware that um, UMass Lowell yesterday, um, it was announced, I think it's gonna be ready next Monday, UMass Lowell, Chancellor Maloney, um, came up with the idea with City Manager Eileen Dunahue, I believe. And the two of them have worked with MEMA and um, they're opening up um, a 50 bed unit in the rec center over there at the, who helped me out, was at the North Campus, I guess. Um, they're gonna use the gymnasium to set up 50 beds. And the way Jody White explained that to us was that these are gonna be individuals that in fact did have the uh, virus, but they've been, um, they've, they're on like a step down unit. They're ready to be released. and they've survived and they've done well and they're doing well. And they, most importantly, they're doing well through the services of the hospital. So just before they want to send them home though, these are the types of individuals, patients, if you will, that will be transported over to the uh, rec center there. Um, I don't know how long they'll be there, if they're going to be there several days or a week or two weeks, 
Um, it's not the type of facility that anybody can walk in to get medical treatment. It, it's not that at all. It's just like a step down unit. But what that does is free up some of the space, i.e. the beds up at the hospital. And that's the big thing. So I, uh, I know that uh, Tom and, and Ed and Roddy are going to speak here. So I don't want to take all the time, but I'll be happy to stay on here and answer any particular questions, Danielle. And again, I want to thank you and Sakari for putting this together. I think it's a, a great idea. Communication is very important these days. And um, I'll just stay on here and listen and take any questions at any time. Thank you, Danielle. Thank you. Thank you, Representative Nangle. I just see that Senator Kennedy is back uh, with us now. And I know Senator Kennedy uh, for about 20 years. And this is a great panel because um, all the uh, low delegation all have experience in, in small business. And that's how uh, Senator Kennedy and I met back in early 2000. Um, if you could uh, say a few things, uh, Senator, um, that, that'd be great. Very much, Sakawi, and uh, thank you for uh, for hosting this. I think this is a, um, it, as Dave said, this is a, a good idea. Um, you know, I've been on the phone for or on Zoom for most of the day so far. Today, we started off with a uh, a meeting. I, I belong. I'm a, a part of a working group of senators that meets three times a week um, in the morning by phone. And then we just had a, a Senate caucus for the Senate session for this week. And that will take, uh, that took a couple of hours. And so I was a little bit late coming to this, but, um, but here I am. And Zoom's not my, uh, not my favorite way of doing things. But, you know, we've been getting um, a lot of calls in the office uh, for uh, a lot more constituent calls than what we got, than what we get normally. Um, a lot of them are for unemployment insurance. Um, some are for the uh, for uh, uh, information regarding the paycheck protection program for small businesses, which I think is a, a good thing to have. We just um, recently uh, had uh, Lowell General Hospital call last week about Northwood and the, the uh, problems that they were having there. And so uh, we were able to provide Northwood with a couple of members um, that they could call the National Guard themselves. So the way it works for um, the way it works for uh, nursing homes and assisted living is that if they call themselves, if they call the National Guard themselves, which means I can't call, uh, the city manager can't call, they have to call themselves. But if they do that, the National Guard will come right up with testing kits. And that's what happened um, with Northwood. And I think there's a couple of other nursing homes that are also having issues. I think maybe uh, Palm Manor. Uh, might be one of those and I'm not sure what the others are but I did have a conversation with the city manager this uh, earlier today um, about the nursing home situation and I think that um, it might be wise to have all the nursing homes call the National Guard and just have them do every nursing home in the city or in the area for that matter um, all at once but that's for other people to make those calls um, but that's that's kind of what's going on with us. For, you know, I also am uh, meeting with, as, as many of you know, I'm the chairman for uh, Culture Arts and Tourism, and that industry has just gotten creamed, um, particularly um, out in the Berkshires and uh, and the Cape. Uh, but but in Lowell and in the Lowell area, uh, we do our share of tourism as well, and that industry. Uh, not only are many of the venues having to, to cancel events, but as a result of that, the other thing that happens is restaurants, which depend on the business from those venues, then that's not coming. That's not going to come back for them. So even when restaurants are able to open in the Berkshires or in the Cape or or even Cape Ann and in other areas, if they don't have the people there because they're not there for the events they're not gonna have enough business to keep going or to, uh, to try to revive themselves for. So for the tourism industry, which is the third largest industry in the Commonwealth, it's really, um, we're really looking at next year for recovery. There'll be no recovery this year whatsoever. And so that's my little report to Kawi. I'd be happy to take any questions, but I don't wanna take up everybody's time. And I know that uh, I think Tom and, and uh, and Raddy, I guess, probably want to have something to say as well. Uh, thank you, Senator. I know that Danielle, um, after everyone introduced themselves, Danielle will have a question and answer se uh, session. 
Um, right now, I would like to introduce a, a good friend of mine who represents Roddy Mom. He currently runs a business in the Highlands and a uh, sole proprietor like many of the, uh, the members joining us today. And like many uh, small business owners um, across the city and across the country, um, a lot of our savings is probably going to dwindle pretty soon the, the longer this lasts. Uh, Representative uh, Mom, uh, would you like to introduce yourself, please? Roddy, can you hear both me? of you. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I, I can. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. I, you were muted. I unmuted you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gee, thanks. I sound better muted. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me uh, say hello again. And uh, I want to thank uh, Danielle and uh, Zakari for putting this together and to all of my colleagues and Senator, uh, I know that we are going through a tough time, but let me share this a uh, little bit with you first. Well, first of all, to all who celebrate the Luna New Year celebration, happy new year to all, and especially to all of my friends and family who are celebrating new year celebration. And new years for Cambodia, for most who don't know, this is the biggest celebration of the entire country and to all who live all over all the world. This is where friends and family get together, where we share each other food and company. And again, it's once of a year, but yet we celebrate the whole month. So imagine as of right now, we are all in our own home and we cannot be allowed to meet each other. But I want all of us to know that this too shall pass and that we will come together and that we will celebrate this wonderful new year after all this taking place. And with that, um, I know that we have the testing facility which is right here up in the Highland here. So that is going place, uh, the report I got right now from an officer who worked closely there just a couple of days ago, who I met as I was outside uh, walking the street a little bit there. Uh, said so that they're testing roughly about 1,000 to 1,500 as of right now. So it is cranking right there, uh, right up the street. And I believe we're the first one to have that, uh, thanks to all of the delegation who uh, really step up and, and help to bring that to Lowell. And that is the first facility which is free of charge uh, to all of the citizens of Massachusetts. So we do have people coming all over to our district here. Um, so that's happening. Uh, as far as the phone call that I received personally, uh, again, small businesses, uh, they are in desperate need. Uh, everything from not having enough to support, uh, again, uh, the paying of the, the rent utility and so on. And of course, the people who live paycheck to paycheck, and you can imagine a small business who support these, again, a couple of people who work for them and on Sunday, they too have no income and that's what they uh, live by. It is the money that come in and they can able to put food on the table. So those are the reverse that I get as well. And at the same time, uh, they are having difficulty time in trying to get in to logging in. And imagine all of this is uh, going in at the same time, which uh, Representative Nangle has spoke about, that we have so many people are jumping in and it's just my heart goes out to them because I know how difficult it is. And uh, again, through our personal life experience, which uh, we've gone through and I personally went through, uh, when there are no food to put on the table for your kid, it is quite difficult uh, for many of us that are so fortunate uh, to have food on a table that don't have to worry about that. Uh, again, when it comes to public safety, that is first and foremost our concern. Uh, I'm, I'm on the committee this year for higher education, uh, art and council with uh, Senator Kennedy, who is the chair of that. Uh, again, yes, we're, we're going through that. I'm also on the uh, Cannabis Commission. I'm the vice chair for that. We talked about that, how difficult that it is. Uh, the funding that comes in, uh, or shall we say, each of these individuals who put money to run their business. And we're not talking about a couple of bucks, we're talking about their saving into this. And it's a business, it is legalized, but imagine that finally they go to a state halt. Well, they're losing their entire life saving as well. 
So those are the stuff that we're working on. And we don't know how to help them move along because both ways, because of that legalized in the state, federally it's not legalized. So therefore they're in this bind that is in a very, very tough place. And yet they're also, because of their business, they're helping to support our economic engine, which is in the very state. So that's what we're dealing with right now on a simple base. Well, with that, I know that there are other individuals who want to say a few words as well, and I want to share that with you. And uh, again, if you need to reach out to me, my office number, uh, I'll make sure I'll get that to you also. Uh, and please connect to us and we're trying our best and most importantly, stay safe, everyone. Thank you for having me. Thank you, Representative Mom. Um, I think Representative Thomas Golden has the big stay at home, the best stay at home look ever. Some of working at home. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> appreciate I, that, Sakari. That's four weeks of uh, of growth, not doing too well here. You know. So uh, you're a very humble guy, and I know you for a long time. You own your own business as well. I've been serving the city. Uh, Low the um, 16th Middlesex, Patakotville, uh, Centralville, and North Chelmsford for uh, 20 years. And you helped me personally when I first started my business. So I always seen you helping the private sector and as well as uh, the city, the nonprofit, and so forth uh, for so many years, um, Representative. Um, please, if you could say something about um, some of the stuff that you do at the state. Of sure. One hundred percent. I think most of my call, my colleagues have already touched on this. I mean, uh, David had said it earlier. Communication is definitely going to be a key during this uh, pandemic. Uh, we have to make sure that we are supporting all all of the local restaurants. Um, they're really getting hit hard, but obviously the small businesses are getting hit hard as well. I think we have to just remember uh, the House, the Senate, the Governor. Everyone's taken in a position from utilities. We want to make sure we continue to mention this because um, when I speak to restaurant owners or small business owners. It's, some of this information doesn't seem to be getting out all the time, but from a utility standpoint, and that includes Comcast, anything on the telecommunication side uh, for, your, for your home or for your business, they're not going to be shutting anybody off. And they're also going to be working to uh, work on a payment plan. And I would invite anybody here um, to call me on that uh, and anyone in the delegation because they could work, we could work together on this to make sure you're comfortable enough. But uh, Eversource, National Grid, uh, all those territories are not going to be shutting anybody off. So that's the most important, even if you don't pay at this time. Uh, David had mentioned uh, the mortgages. Uh, if you're having an issue with mortgage companies, maybe that's something we can help. Um, we, the delegation as a whole had been involved in just something that uh, was happening yesterday with the HUD property. Uh, we, we alerted the attorney general's office and uh, unfortunately, uh, Sakari, you had mentioned it, I'm in the real estate world as well. Um, one of the management companies, a large management company, was just being a little over the top with trying to uh, collect uh, monies from people, and uh, that raised the ear of uh, of the attorney general. So, you know, I'm glad that the delegation, myself, we kind of took that on uh, in downtown. Uh, also, you you know, unemployment insurance, folks. Um, this is something. Uh, this is a fire hose situation. Uh, typically, I believe I, I often have joked with a few of you on this that. Uh, I truly believe uh, the delegation knows all six members of unemployment insurance because there's really not a lot of people over there during these, uh, during these better times, or should I say pre COVID. Um, I know that the governor Baker, who I think has done a great job, just upped that to 500 and the, the log, the, the number of phone calls that are coming in, it just, it's, it's, uh, it's absolutely insane. Um, the small business loans. Um, I know that people are having some difficulty with that. We are trying to be helpful where we can. Uh, I think this is really about, once again, communication. And uh, the delegation as a whole has uh, you know, brought money back for startup businesses who have done it uh, over in the 129 corridor in Chelmsford, as well as uh, throughout UMass Lowell. We've done, it, done that in the years past um, to the tune of about 600,000. But I think maybe this year, and this is gonna be a big, big stretch, uh, we might be looking towards small businesses in our, you know, in our hometown. Um, uh, for me, it'd be Lowell and Chelmsford. For Eddie, it would be Lowell. Uh, I'm going to say little Eddie, Lowell to Westford, Grotman, yeah. and so forth. Um, but I think we're going to probably uh, pivot a little bit and try to see what we can provide uh, during this pandemic. We want to make sure that the startup companies who are creating the next widget um, 
that's going to either make our lives easier or hopefully in healthcare, uh, make things uh, you know, much better for all of us. And I, I say widget just as a, a general term, whatever uh, we need to help, because we do have to make sure that um, post COVID-19, we're starting to look that way. Uh, David had mentioned it earlier, Lowell General Hospital, Lowell Community Health Center. Uh, they have their eye on the ball. Um, I really believe that. We've been in contact with them uh, on a very, very regular basis. And I think Jody White is doing a, a top-notch job over there um, with Amy Hoey and that whole crew. So um, healthcare is a, a first concern. It's a major concern. But I think from a business perspective, a small business all the way up to some of the larger businesses, we need to start thinking about what post COVID will look like and um, how the delegation as a whole, and I know we've been talking with um, Congresswoman Trahan, uh, what is it that we can, we can try to do? A lot of the stuff right now, most of you know this, that uh, the Commonwealth of Massachusetts cannot run a budget deficit. Um, that's that term 9C will be coming in. We have about $3.5 billion in our rainy day account. And my guess is from the last numbers we had heard on a leadership meeting, we would blow through that uh, immediately. So I think that uh, you know, we're gonna be really dependent, hopefully, fingers crossed, on some ARA money. Uh, those of you that were in uh, the business or, or remember this back in 2008, nine and 10, that money came in from the federal government for quote unquote shovel ready projects. Um, we're hoping that our federal delegation is going to bring some of that uh, money in as well. So um, once again, uh, restaurant businesses, I know there's a couple of restaurants on there. We have been talking about the insurance industry, how um, they're not really stepping up to the plate. Uh, unfortunately, I think that that is going to turn into some type of litigation uh, when in contact. I know the, the, the house members and I'm sure uh, Senator Kennedy has been in contact on the Senate side, but it appears to me uh, from Jamie Murphy, who's the chair of uh, insurance, um, this litigation may end up have to happen. Have to happen. Um, we can agree with it or not agree with it, but that's where it's, where, where it's at. Uh, a lot of good things have been happening around the city. There's a lot of folks that are coming together. Uh, a lot of things happening out in Chelmsford that I've been out there just this morning. Um, but people are sticking together, staying together. And uh, Danielle, I have to you know, give a shout out. This is uh, We've been on a couple of these together and I really sincerely appreciate it because um, it's the communication that's going to keep us all going. Um, and uh, I'll, I'll flip it back over to, uh, to you, Danielle. And uh, just um, folks, if there's a question, because so many people have so many different issues, different problems, um, you know, reach out to myself, to, to Eddie. I know Reader is on here as well. And, and um, Sakari and Roddy and David, this is what we do. Um, so if there's a particular problem that you experience, don't hesitate to pick up that phone and just ask us. We'll get the answer. Uh, we may not have it right this moment, but we will get the answer. Danielle, thank you again. And Sakari, thank you very much for putting this together. Thank you. Thank you, Representative. Before I turn to Danielle for the questions and end of the session, I know you're very good with moving the, uh, the Zoom uh, conference here. I just saw a couple of names from the city uh, uh, who are joining us as well. Um, Christine McCall from the Law Department and Tom Lamont from the Economic Development Department. Um, especially Tom, if during the questions and answers, anything related that you can answer, please feel free to jump in. Um, I want to thank everybody and I know we're short on time, so I'm going to turn to Danielle for the questions and answer session. Thank you very much. And I also wanted to acknowledge that Lowell School Committee woman Connie Martin is on the call and also Virginia Crockett Timmons, who is a Chelmsford Select woman. And of course, we had already acknowledged Rita. Hi, Virginia. I didn't see you. <laughs> Sorry, I just said, I just said hi, hi, Virginia, like she could hear me. <laughs> okay. We all could hear you. Sorry. <laughs> I'll, I'll go back to mute now. Sorry. <laughs> see you there. Hi, <laughs> Representative Goldman. <laughs> and then Lowell City Council Rita Marcia is on the Zoom as well, which we, we said hi to her earlier, but we wanted to mention her again. Um, so there were a lot of questions that were submitted in advance, and some of them appear to be questions that I'm not sure the state delegation is going to be able to answer. Um, so if you cannot answer these questions, please just let me know. I am keeping track of all the questions. Feel free to add additional questions to the chat. Again, if we don't have the answers, we'll find the answers for you. Um, we had a great webinar on Monday with the SBA in conjunction with many other partners that is recorded and on YouTube so I can share that link it's also on our website 
we have a lot of information about EIDL, PPP, unemployment, um, tons of resources on the Chamber website. Um, so I will send out a recap to everybody that's on the call. If you registered through Constant Contact, I already have your information. If you didn't, please leave your name and email in the chat or email me directly. I put my email in the chat. That way I can get the information over to you. So that was kind of a little bit of housekeeping. Um, but the first question is how much money has Lowell received for this crisis? Where can the public learn about how it's being used? And how can we give feedback if we feel it's something that the, the money needs to go to towards like basic resources for community, masks, et cetera? So I don't know who wants to take that. And I, you know what I'll do too, I'll copy and paste that question in the chat so that you can read through it again one more time. I, Danielle, I think, I think that's an open-ended question. In other words, I think, you know, money will continue to come in. And so to tally it up now, I think we're, I, I don't think we're enough through the whole process or the whole ordeal where, where it's worthwhile tallying it up right now. Maybe at the end it might be, but um, so far it seems that we've been able to get what we need just about when we need it. We do have, I think we mentioned ventilators earlier. Um, you know, the delegation had a meeting with Lowell General Hospital earlier in the week. They still have a good amount of ventilators available. So, and we were able to get them ventilators from two different companies. Phillips came up with uh, five to six ventilators, and then Zoll also came up with four or five ventilators as well. So, at least on the short term, the Lowell General Hospital should be okay with with the ventilators. But in terms of like how much money has has the Commonwealth or the federal government spent? on uh, Lowell or the, the greater Lowell area so far. Uh, I'm not sure that would be a meaningful figure because it would change almost daily. And I got the thumbs up from Representative Golden. Thank you, Senator Kennedy. I don't know I if- I just figured out how to do that, so. <laughs> Isn't that fun? <laughs> I'm, gonna give, I'm gonna give you one of these. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <all right. laughs> okay, so the next question is, for the state delegation, are you learning from what other communities are doing and working with local officials to help meet the needs here for available methods? Yeah, I, I would say, if I, I'll jump in on that. I'll say that uh, the communication, uh, we talk about communication, but it's been unparalleled. I mean, David, had mentioned, once again, David had mentioned earlier today, I know Eddie, we've been on more um, Zoom meetings and um, you know different things on Facebook and just staying in touch with everybody, especially from the leadership side of the world. Um, continuing to try to find out how we do things better every day. Uh, tip of the cap really goes to Lowell General and uh, Lowell Community Health Center from the healthcare side. Uh, they're really in tuned, and um, I can't imagine um, how much uh, more we could stay in tune with, 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 with what is happening. I see uh, the greater Lowell area as one of the leaders. Um, talking to the manager, uh, both Manager Donahue and Manager Cohen out in Chelmsford, it really seems like there's a lot of information coming. And in some aspects, Danielle, a little too much. Uh, it, people are getting overrun uh, with information. So the, some of the stuff that you've provided for businesses, I think is really, uh, um, it's, it's a better way of kind of compartment, comp compartmentalizing stuff when people need to go for just health care, for unemployment insurance, and for business loans. So I don't think it's a question of communication. I, I just think that, um, I think uh, Congresswoman Trahan had said this, uh, they're going through one set, one piece of legislation, and if we didn't catch it this time, we'll catch it on the second. And if we don't catch it on the second, we're going to be doing one, two, three, four, or five different pieces of legislation. Um, so I kind of echo uh, Ed's comments as well on that. Excellent, thank you. Does anybody else want to add to that? I'm glad you Danielle, mentioned just some of the. Um, this is Dave. Just some of the uh, what you were talking about, as my colleagues will attest to, the same problems that are facing us here in Lowell and greater low the same problems that all of our colleagues are having all across the state. So it's the same issue. If I was listening to the question there, I was distracted reading something. But, um, uh, you know, it's the same issues that they're having, the, the, the unemployment insurance, or the, the benefits, and so on and so forth, and the lending institutions. So it's a lot of the same issues, obviously, that are happening here, happening all around the state. That's all. And I'm glad you mentioned the whole information overload. So even like on our website under our COVID-19 resources, I kept on adding stuff. And finally, I looked at the page and I said, oh my gosh, this is so overwhelming to look at. So last Thursday, I sat down for hours and just made it and deleted stuff and 
and put it in a way so that it's so much easier to follow and read and find exactly what you're looking for because you could, like you said, spend just hours and hours combing through information. Um, and, and some information is presented easier than others. So there was a lot of questions. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna kind of give this like a broad brush because there were a ton of questions on EIDL and PPP and unemployment. And we do have some of those resources that I'll send out, but I didn't know if anybody wanted to touch upon any of that, whether it be small business loans or unemployment right now. Well, just I, uh, I, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, go ahead, Ed. Go ahead. Go ahead, Ed. I, I was just going to say, as far as the the uh, the small business loans or the paycheck uh, protection, um, that's something that people have until June 30th um, to apply for. I think I think it's a, it's a real good program for small businesses. If you've got 500 or less employees, then you you can get a loan of, um, and the loans go up to about 10 million dollars, and they're also uh, forgivable if you maintain your payroll or if you bring your payroll back. So in the, in the, in the example of say a restaurant that it was shut down, um, they would be eligible if they could, um, if they bring everybody back when they, when they reopen. So I, I think that's a, a really good program. I think, it, and, and I'll, let me just add, because um, I, I do a lot of uh, cultural stuff that there is, and, and we do have a large artist community in Lowell that you can, individual artists can get up to a thousand dollar grant from the uh, Massachusetts Cultural Council and um, private nonprofits can also get money from them to, to kind of uh, keep on going. So those are two things that, um, that, are, that are good programs as well for the artist community and for the private nonprofit community. Anybody that needs uh, specific information on that, please call my office at 617-722-1630. A live person will answer the phone and we'll be glad to help you out with that. Thank you. That's a good point, Ed. And what he was saying is, yes, it is up to $10 million and it's, a one, it's only 1% interest rate and it's a two year maturity on it. But one thing that, um, when it was talking about the small businesses and if you know you keep the uh, employees on the payroll for eight weeks the money can also be used for rent mortgage interest utilities etc so that's kind of important and i believe it opened up i think it was april 3rd or april 4th and it does close on june 30th and i'm sure danielle you probably have the website uh you know for the ppe etc and the sba so that I'm sure you can put that out. Uh, I'm sure all your members that are on the phone probably already have that. If they don't, Danielle, we can get it to you, but I, I'd be willing to think that you probably already have it and I would encourage them to go online to that website. I'll post the link right now to our resources and it's broken out into small business loans, unemployment and some other resources. Right, good, good. I have a question. I don't know how it works. Do we raise our hands when we have questions like a classroom, Danielle? No, raise the roof. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I just want to follow up on that on that uh, question, Danielle. I don't know if you have um, a question that would follow up on that, on that or not. I know there's a lot of resources available to everyone, the, the individuals and the business owners, and sometimes it might be overloaded, like you said. But when I, I read those resources, it sounds easy um, to follow the directions and apply for it. And it's almost easy to get, but I know I got some calls and people try to apply. Um, it's not that easy um, to go through the, the process, one. And number two, people find out that they don't qualify. Um, I don't know if uh, the mode delegation and, and your office, Danielle, if you have staff that would be able to answer questions as they are going through the website to how to apply for it. And uh, also, um, Senator kind of just mentioned that artists can qualify for it. Uh, can someone briefly also mention the different categories of businesses now that would qualify? For example, like you know, self-employed is such a broad category. Um, if you are a consultant, even like a part-time consultant, um, would you be able to qualify for these small business loans or self-employed benefits? Uh, yes, there's just about every category is is eligible. If you've got less than 500 employees, you can be a sole proprietor. You can be, um, you know, you can be a, a, 
uh, anybody at all and you can you should be able to apply and if people are having difficulty then i would uh, uh, encourage them to call either my office or somebody in the delegation's office and i'm sure that any of us would be uh, happy to help them out with with the process it is you know uh, i should say that it'll it probably as time goes on it probably will be a little bit easier to get through than it is right now um so for people that can wait you have up until uh, till uh, June 30th to apply for people that can wait. There's probably some that might be a smarter thing to do than to try to get on now. But but anyways, uh, feel free to call my office or anybody in the delegation. I'm sure we'd be happy to help you. And it just about every to to more directly answer your question, I guess, Kawi, just about anybody that's um, that's a small that would qualify as a small business. So you can be a sole proprietor. You can be uh, you can be anybody at all, and and um, and you should be able to qualify for that money. And then from the chamber perspective, some of the things that we've kind of learned along the way is so for PPP, a lot of the local lenders are only accepting existing clients. Um, so if you have a relationship with a lender, definitely go to them first. Um, there is somebody on the Zoom right now from Hanscom Federal Credit Union. Bill's on there, and they are it, thumbs up if they're you're still accepting people that will, can become members to access PPP. Okay, so if you haven't had any luck anywhere else, I'm sending folks to Hanscom Federal Credit Union. They are accepting people. Um, also, the next step if your lender can't help you is to go to the Find a Lender tool through the SBA. Um, all of this stuff is on our website, but they can still direct you to a lender who's not accepting new clients or they're directing you to microloan lenders. Um, so my recommendation also would be to go to the Entrepreneurship Center at Community Teamwork. They can't help with PPP, but they are they do have microloans currently, and they also will help you with the application, as well as the City of Lowell Economic Development Department. We have Christine McCall on the call, as well as Tom Lamond, and they can help too. Um, both organizations are really busy right now, obviously, so I would just recommend that you try to schedule a time to talk to both or either or organizations. Um, also, the state has a pandemic unemployment assistance that, that's gonna be rolling out soon for all you know, contractors, 1099, gig workers. That information's also on our website. So if you fall within one of those categories, I would def definitely recommend reading up about that. So another question we have is, it seems the highest concentration of coronavirus cases are in this particular order, the Highlands, then Centralville, then Pawtucketville. And do you have any ideas to as why that is? I could make a, a comment on that because um, uh, initially the report that came from the manager's office was just on the number of positive cases. Um, but then I asked uh, her office to break down into neighborhood distribution. So that way we know where the, the burden uh, lies and how we can reach out to different um, neighborhoods uh, differently, but um, based on, on the number that the Highlands, uh, they break the city report break down into the, the Highland and the Lower Highland. And if you combine those two neighborhoods together, that makes up the, the largest area in the city. And you could also say, you know, because we have more people in this area, it would have a higher number of, of cases. And the uh, uh, second, this is only my opinion, my second um, perception of that is that it's probably more, um, especially the lower highlands, it's more uh, pop uh, population density and that would create, um, uh, give it more of a, uh, uh, a positive test in, in, in this area. I just made a motion uh, last night um, because uh, right now the C report breaking down to neighborhood distribution uh, gender um, and age, and you see that this uh, virus does not affect any one particular age group. It affects actually the uh, the city manage, manager mentioned last night uh, a large number of it throughout the city is actually in the in the thirties and forty years old. Um, that probably shows that um, a lot of the younger uh, population probably not practicing social distance as much as the elderly population. Um, the motion that I made last night was to have the city add one more category to the report, which is to uh, race and ethnicity. Uh, that's the model that the state is using right now. So that way we know, um, you know, again, uh, how to best approach it in terms of educational material, 
um, if the city is not capable, if a certain uh, group might not uh, maybe have a, 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 a surge, uh, if the city is not capable of handling it, we can ask the state and the federal for assistance. So hopefully that, that will be coming up in the next couple of weeks that will include different, um, uh, different categories as well. What can be done to stop the scammers, such as those who offer N95 masks for sale online, charge a credit card, and then say the item is on back order? Danielle, I, um, it's funny. We had a call on, on one of those last week with a credit card, and here's what I would do. Two things. Reach out to our office as well, but I would just have you call right over to the Attorney General's uh, Consumer Hotline, which is 617-727-8400. Um, I would also reach out to the AG at that time, but something else I would do is just reach right out to your credit card company and uh, stop the payment if you're able to do that. But unfortunately, there are people out there trying to take advantage of this, uh, at these difficult times. So I would reach out to the Attorney General's office as I gave that number or my office at 617-722-2522. Excellent. 2520, I'm sorry, 2520, all these numbers. I'm impressed that you know all those off the top of your head. <laughs> <laughs> and not always. <laughs> We've also had some questions about unemployment and training being offered in the area. And I really highly recommend that people reach out to the Mass Hire Lowell Career Center. They have some great resources, some great webinars, and the staff over there is top notch. Um, so if you haven't done that yet, I would really recommend that anybody that is facing unemployment right now utilize their resources. I don't know if anybody else has any, any advice for those who have recently become unemployed. Might be something, Danielle, that we can uh, inquire to UMass Lowell and or Middlesex Community College to see if possibly they would be offering any retraining programs and whatnot in the near future. And we, have, we could look into. We have Judy Barkay from Middlesex Community College. So I don't know if oh. Judy has anything to add. Hey, Judy. Hey, everybody. Um, yes. Hi. Uh, yeah. Um, Middlesex is, um, you know, working really hard to go remote um, with all of our education and training, and that includes the non-credit training as well. Uh, we've been putting out um, some emails and some constant contacts, some some blasts around programs that are short term that uh, folks that are unemployed might take advantage of. Uh, we've been in constant contact with Peter Farkas um, around trying to reach out to those that have applied for unemployment, but because they haven't been able to, the, the, um, the folks that are dislocated from their employers haven't been able to come in to, the, um, to mass hire yet, they haven't been able to catalog those folks. It's all still with unemployment. So as soon as, as soon as we can, we're gonna try to have um, you know, some Zoom meetings with, uh, with folks that are unemployed. We're gonna work with, with Pete to do whatever we can to, you know, to support that population. Um, but everybody at the college at Middlesex is really committed to, to working with folks to try to get them back to work. And, uh, and I know over at UMass Lowell, same, same thing. But if anybody has any questions or if anybody has any uh, people in their lives that have become, un, you know, dislocated, um, certainly reach out to Pete, certainly reach out to me. Um, I'd be more than happy to, to, to help them as far as the education and training goes. Thank you, Judy. And I know... Thanks, um, thank you, Judy. Thanks, and, Dave. And City Councilor Rita Mercia, I think, had something to say. Yes, thank you very much, Danielle. Um, this is the first time I've been on Zoom, so I'm not really that great with it. But uh, it was wonderful to hear from the state delegation. Um, I know that the, this problem is all over the world and people are facing tough times in the, in, on their own. Um, but my concern is with the residents of the city of Lowell. That's, and the local leaders are doing their part too, as uh, Councillor Chow can vouch for. As last night, a few of our councillors, we had some concerns and ways to see if we could help. Um, many people are struggling with the bills piling up. That's businesses as well. And they're on a limited or no income. And I, although I know that the city uh, needs to function during these tough times, uh, we should still have compassion. And so I asked through a motion that the city 
namely the city manager, contact the vendors or ven vendor if there's only just one. They go after people that are, uh, are late in their payment and they forgive any interest and in penalties during this time. I'd like to see that happen. Uh, offer a grace period with an up, uh, update that states that uh, we will uh, do the best we can to help you. I know that they have decreased the penalty uh, on late fees for your uh, uh, taxes to from thirty dollars fine to uh, reduce it to fifteen. That to me is not acceptable. Uh, many companies are offering, like for example, my car insurance. They will suspend all cancellations for non-payment from April 1st to June 1st. Um, they also have waived all the fees for late payment or insufficient funds. Uh, mortgage companies are offering deferred payments from anywhere from three to six months. Just as some banks are eliminating penalties for early withdrawal from certificates of deposit, the Registry of Motor Vehicles is extending license renewals. So I say, let us just like Lowell show compassion to um, provide flexibility for people who are unable to make payments so that we can build a strong relationship and compassion, not only to the uh, residents, but the businesses as well. So it, it, Sakari Chow knows that this is what we talked about. So the city of Lowell local officials, we're doing our part in the best way that we can. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Rudia. Um, so we are at 2.01. I don't want to keep people past, well, I don't, but I already did keep you past the 2 o'clock. Um, I don't know if anybody has any closing remarks. We do have other questions. I will make sure that they get answered. Just, it won't happen right now, but we'll make sure that we get back to you. Danielle, I'd just like to say, first of all, I'm sorry I didn't mention you at the beginning, but I just want to thank you for putting this on along with, with Sakawi. I think that this is a really good forum to have periodically. We might It might be worthwhile to do this every couple of weeks just so that everybody gets gets updated. And, um, and that's all I've got to say. Just um, thank you for doing this and, uh, and everybody just uh, stay as healthy as you can. Be careful. I have to learn how to use the emoji, Danielle. <laughs> that, is, uh, that is so cool to give people thumbs up. And I want to thank you, Danielle, and the Green Low Chamber of Commerce for keeping all your information uh, up to date and current. Thank you for the low delegation for, for your time. Um, I cannot say enough. And everybody feels that we, we are in this together. And, um, you know, I, I pray for everyone um, every day that we, we survive through this, not just in terms of businesses-wise, but personally, um, ourselves, our family, um, to have good health. And um, I, I think we'll, we'll come out of this okay. I know that uh, both the city officials, as Vice Mayor Rita Mercia said, we're working hard on this, and uh, no delegations are working very hard. Um, if anyone has questions uh, for me and about the city, please feel free to contact me on Facebook, on Messenger, or text me or call me. Um, I'd be happy to get uh, whatever information I can get to you. And I agree, this is a great forum and I look forward. I recognize so many uh, people's names uh, on the screen. I wish I could say hello to all of them. <laughs> but um, I look forward to seeing everybody uh, in person in the future. Thank you so much. And I wanted to mention that community teamwork is here to help people with rental assistance and food insecurity. Um, so the COVID hotline is 978 Six five four five six zero seven, and they have an email address COVID response CTI at comteam.org. I will include that when I send out a recap. I'll also put it on the Facebook event page that we made. Um, and I wanted to mention that we have a Zoom with Congresswoman Lori Trahan on Friday at 2 p.m. You can find that information on the Chamber website at glcc. Um, greaterlowellchamber.org, also on Facebook. Um, but I didn't know if Representatives Roddy, Mom, Dave Nangle, or Tom Golden want to say anything before we wrap up. I just want. Dave Nangle, Danielle. <laughs> nope. Go right ahead. Uh, uh, thank Danielle, you, Danielle, for putting this together. Yep. Same here, Danielle. To you and Sakari for putting this together. It's very informative for all of us. Thank you. Thank you very much. And thank, thank you, Sakari. Well, he, he got the ball rolling on this, so we really appreciate it. But 
like Senator Kennedy said, it would be great to do something like this every couple of weeks. Um, we would love to do that. If people found that helpful, um, we, we will work on putting another one that's on the calendar. Well, again, Danielle, thank you, and Zakari Chow, and to all of the friends and out there, and all of the counselor, and to my entire colleagues. Uh, I just want to say that I want to thank Reverend Nangle for uh, pretty much laid out all of it, and uh, that's kind of cover everything that we are working on right now. So again, uh, please keep in mind, be safe, and uh, above all, be positive always. Everyone, stay safe until we meet again in front of us. <laughs> Take care. Thank guys. Thank you, everybody. Have a great day. Thank you.